but uh, what I would also add to this, if you're talking about people who are new to sport, uh, you better make it fun. Right. <laughs> it's got to be a good time. Right. They've got to have a good time out there. They're, they're not, you know, you, you can't train them, you know, in the same fashion that you would people who have a lot of experience. Even people who have a lot of experience, there has to be, a, there has to be with the intensity or the steady state work, you know, there's, there's got to be full focus for sure, but there also has to be a lightness to it, right, as well. Uh, but, you know, with, I think, let me tell you a story. Stories are, are, are a great way of illustrating uh, points. Let's go back to Ratzeburg. In 1973, uh, I was coaching the U.S. national team eight, and we spent we spent over a month in Ratzburg. We were the guests of the uh, German national uh, group, and uh, this is the story. Driving into Ratzburg to where the academy is, uh, there's a small, very small lake that was where the Ratzburg club was before there was a training center. Uh, that little lake was called Kuchensee, which means, I think, Kitchen Sea. And we, we were in the bus you know, with, with, uh, with the athletes, and uh, gee, all over that little lake of Kuchensee were all these little singles out, all these singles out there, all which way, pointed in various directions, I guess that's the same thing. And uh, kids out there splashing around, and I, after we got there, uh, after the boat was rigged, which took two days and so forth, I was talking to uh, this fellow who was running the club, who had uh, been, uh, you know, been part of their national team system. I said, how about over the club, over in the Cuban City, what's going on? He said, oh, those are the kids that are over there. And I said, do they have any instructions? He said, no, they're out there playing. So, there's a, there's a story there, or there's information there uh, that I think is valuable. Uh, there is a time, you know, in the beginning of this, to have play on the water, where they're not, you know, being, having a coaching launch hover. Obviously, you have to have a safe body of water to do that. Uh, but that needs to be kept in mind. That might be, that those thoughts, I think, are, are important for anybody who's dealing with, with children, uh, uh, introducing them to the sport. Uh, you know, regarding you know, your questions, yeah, it's obvious. I mean, there has to be, you know, there has to be very, very careful, slow-moving introduction to the stroke pattern. You know, rowing, if you're, if you're somehow subject to eights, and the eights are the primary, uh, vehicle and row by pairs and fours in the eight. Slow it down for them. Uh, do that. Break the stroke into the parts, so forth and so on. Like we all do and we all know about. Uh, and I would add to that, anybody that comes in, people that come into a sport, uh, and the people that you want to be cultivating are people that part of their nature, they're competitive. So even at that level, even when they barely know how to row, maybe by pairs or fours and an eight, you can do little 30 stroke races or 20 stroke races. And they can hoot and holler and have fun and be all over the boat. Uh, so I think that's very important. But you no, know, taking time to teach the stroke pattern, uh, clearly, uh, shorter periods of concentration work for everybody. Uh, I, let, let me put that into context. It doesn't, I don't think it was until my fourth year here at Yale, third or fourth year, I'm not sure which, that we could actually execute a strong 85%, 22 strokes a minute top of the river piece be able to execute really effective steady state rowing, technically accurate, 
takes a, a pretty developed athlete. I would even go as so far as to say a very developed athlete. I agree. Uh, so the steady state work that you do, uh, I think you can get more than more than sufficient steady state, low heart rate work done while you're drilling. Doing your body over pauses, doing you know, doing the variety of drills that you do, the heart rate will be elevated. You know, uh, you know, particularly if you emphasize, you know, let them know you're not interested in having them pose in the boat and try to feel pressure on the blade. So, in the process of teaching the rowing stroke, they're getting good moderate to low intensity work done. So it's not as if you have to send off a bunch of people who don't, can't row the boat hardly and say, okay, we're going to do a 15 minute piece at 50%. The blades are all over the place and you know, it's chaos. I think you can, you can, repeating myself, you can get the good steady state work done as you're drilling. You know, we used to put our middle schoolers in, in their singles and then we'd throw buoys on the water and it, you have to cover this 600 meter distance but you have to have a buoy in your boat in order to finish the finish. Sounds like finish fun. Yeah, yeah, and they yeah. had a blast. I mean, they, yeah. they loved it. Yeah. And it's, it's amazing too when we threw that, that game aspect in, into it where they just allowed their intuitive technical ability to take over because sure. a lot of times with these young athletes they're overthinking and they're kind of get nervous whereas if, if they're out there and they're having fun mm -hmm. you know they'll sit there and they'll, they'll stop and they'll turn and, they, and they'll kind of move forward and, and shift on a dime and they're not you know right. we at once have a person flip in that situation you right. know they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff you know right. stopping back yeah. and trying to pick something up out of the water yeah well you've uh, witnessed that yeah. and a lot of fun and, yeah. and so so yeah and I, I I witnessed certainly at the high school level and we're up in Massachusetts and we have the textile river regatta which is a longer race about four miles um, we'll see a we'll see a lot of novice crews in there that have been rolling for maybe four to six weeks, and they're they're on a four mile race by all lates, and, and I think that it's not helpful for those teams. And if coaches can just step back and say it's all right to be be competitive with your crew and have that fun without diving into the kind of the formal either head race or sprint race aspect. Right. Yeah. I know that the uh, you know there's a parallel to that uh, you know on the collegiate level. Division one, compared. I find uh, in the fall, you know, it's such a prime opportunity. It's people are fresh; they've just arrived on campus. The weather is good. It's just a perfect time to teach and to do inter. You know, have boats mixed, inner squad work, but you know, getting away from you know the the outside competition. I'd, I'd be less honest if I didn't say I really get annoyed uh, by the fact that you're caught between a rock and a hard place. But, you know, for example, with the, the race down here, the head of the Hoos, the head of the Charles, you know, I won't give more than maximum five workouts to a lineup because it's taking me off target. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, and so I will put together, you know, five days before, let's say the Charles, I'll put together the lineup and so forth, but then as soon as it's over, you know, we go back to what our work is. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's always it's a it's a it's a delicate balance. Uh, it's not balance. I mean, it's you know putting people out, you know, and telling them to, to race four miles and they don't know how to row. Uh, what you could say about that is, well, it only happens once, so we can we can deal with it. Uh, but it's certainly, you know, there's not, from my perspective, there's not a whole lot that would be particularly productive about it. Uh, you know, particularly if, if particularly if the leadership, the coaches, made an issue about where you finished, you know, in the race. Right. You know, that would that would add sort of. You know, a little bit of a weight to it. So, uh, no, I, I think you know the balance is covering the physiological and technical pieces of the sport, developing those in the athlete, and making sure that in that process there's a lightness to it, that it's enjoyable, 
that there's you can, as you just illustrate, you can put little, you can put competitive little games into it. Uh, that that kind of thing because I think it's very important. If you take youngsters and approach the development, you know, from a, that you would do with you know high level athletes, uh, you know, that's that's not that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, what I saw in the Coogan scene makes sense. Go out and play. You know, uh, it's the same thing you see in sailing. Put the kids out in these little sabots. And just be supervised, make sure that it, you know, when they roll over, right. they get back in. <laughs> yeah. But they'll figure out which way the sail needs to move to catch the wind, and, and they'll have fun doing it.